Hello world. Someone made a comment about how they preferred it when I sat down because it felt more casual and more like we were having a conversation. And because I'm very open to suggestions on how we film Hello World that doesn't exclusively have to be, you know, like a tech background, it can change because we talk about anything on this show. So I thought couch. Couches are nice. Let's try filming with a couch. So do fans ruin good things? This is definitely something I've wanted to talk about because it's a very yes and no answer and I love those types of discussions. So I think it's safe to say that a lot of products and a lot of entertainment entertainment and a lot of things we enjoy in life can very easily be ruined by the fan base that makes them possible because sometimes you know typically if a fan base makes something bad just by overhyping it or worshiping it like it's a religion or perhaps by intimidating those who disagree with them it can be very very difficult to separate yourself from that fan base sometimes it's easier than others like for instance Rick and Morty I think is a great example because I don't think that Rick and Morty is a bad show I don't watch it religiously but I've seen episodes from it. My friend Dan, the movie man over at Taylor Swift Movie Reviews, really likes that show and he thinks it's very cleverly written. And from what I've seen, I agree with him. But at the same time, we had that Szechuan Saw story earlier where people basically lost their minds because they drove hours and hours, lined up outside a McDonald's because they were told that if they went to a McDonald's at a certain time, they would have Szechuan Sauce. Not reading the fine print from the announcement that McDonald's sent out saying that it's an extremely limited supply and it will not be available at all locations. Please check beforehand at those particular locations to see where they are. Now this of course all boiled down from just a very simple line from one Rick and Morty episode where Rick said that back in 1998 he had this Szechuan sauce they made for the Mulan film back then that was really good and he liked it. It was not some pivotal part of the show it was something he really liked but it wasn't like that was what the entire show was based around but because it was such a small aspect of the show and because McDonald's thought it was cool that they got a special little shout out they gave that guy from Rick and Morty this bottle of Szechuan sauce and said like this is one of the last bottles and then of course people went nuts over it people went to bidding wars over it and depending on which side of the Rick and Morty fandom you fall on this could be a very fascinating story or a very stupid one and if you're like me or my friend Dan you would admit that all the hype surrounding Szechuan sauce was pretty ridiculous it's just a sauce people just because they don't make it anymore doesn't necessarily make it heavenly just because one guy liked it back in 1998 doesn't make it the best sauce in the world it's kind of famous because of that show not necessarily because of its flavor. Like, if Szechuan sauce, when it came out in 98, was so popular, and it became one of the most popular sauces of all time, McDonald's would have kept selling it. They would have kept shipping it with their McNuggets. But because it was only used for a limited time for that film, most people probably went with signature sauce or ranch, and they decided that because the demand wasn't so high, they decided to discontinue it. That's the real reason they don't have Szechuan sauce anymore. And of course, no one was even mentioning this or bringing up that they wanted Szechuan sauce back for the past 20 years. Keep in mind I was born in 1998. The only reason it made a comeback was because of that fan base and that's how you get these cringy vines of people who jumped up on the McDonald's counter saying I want Szechuan sauce or you cut to a McDonald's where people are chanting that they want sauce. People lining up around the block or saying boycott McDonald's because they promised Szechuan sauce and didn't deliver on it. See when that happens as someone who hasn't really watched much of the show it makes me really start to not like the fan base and therefore hard to look past it to get interested in the content itself. I think another great example of this is the Call of Duty franchise. I haven't really played much of their games and I think they look fine, they look generic to me, but then again I'm not a gamer. Refer to the Hello World episode about that. Well at the same time I don't see anything particularly wrong with the Call of Duty games and a lot of my friends say that certain games in the franchise had really great campaigns and really great stories that they enjoyed. Still the cliche, the kind of stereotype of Call of Duty gamers is that they're young, they're little kids, they scream at you, they get mad at you, it's the McDonald's McDonald's, it's the fast food of video games, and in that way, telling someone that you like playing Call of Duty makes you seem like a filthy casual because it's for everyone. It's not an elite game, it's not a special game, it's something generic. Even though it probably revolutionized the idea of first-person shooters at all, and a lot of games today probably derive their success or derive their core method of gameplay from the Call of Duty franchise. But if you play it though, you're a casual. Such a lame game. It's not as cool as all the other games. And to an extent, we can even look at Apple and we can look at Apple Sheep as a way some people do not want to be associated with a certain brand. One of the reasons I decided to start making tech videos that were so particularly biased was because I think fans of Apple had this issue where they were accused of being sheep, which meant blindly following Apple, and that became a very popular way to make fun of Apple's users. The fact that people line up around the block to buy iPhones, you know, the idea that during a recession, as the United States was in a place of economic downturn, instead of back in like the 
Depression days where we had people lining up to buy soup. In the 21st century, we have people lining up to buy the next $1,000 iPhone. I understand though, we're not in a recession now. I just saying during the recession, people were lining up to buy the next iPhone. That definitely can ruin a brand name for a lot of people. You know, in the Samsung Galaxy growing up ad I recently talked about, they bring up in the ad that every single year you have to wait in line for the iPhone. They are always cutting back to the Apple store with people stacked up in line, waiting in the rain. And then whenever they cut to someone using the Galaxy phone, they just already have it. They're unboxing it. They didn't have to wait in line. And I definitely have a few friends in my life who have chosen to go with smaller brands. They choose to not buy the flagships, whether it be Google or Samsung or Apple, because they like the idea that smaller companies don't have to focus too much on advertising. They don't have to focus too much on innovative features. They just have to focus on making a phone that's affordable and that works. So I think in that regard, you can confidently say that for those particular customers, for those types of people, they're against buying a particular brand because it is popular. They don't like knowing that there's some giant entity, you know, with $500 billion in cash, talking about Apple here, the idea that they would send money to that. The fact that if they buy this product, it is funding this idea of a giant corporation that is only a couple of years from being a trillion dollar company. So I definitely think it's safe to say it varies from person to person, but I think you knew that already. But I'm just trying to figure out what is applicable to certain things for me and not applicable to others. So for instance, I see this pop up a lot in TV shows. If you don't watch a particular TV show, and believe me, I'm definitely behind on most TV shows and most people get shocked or surprised when they find out I don't watch Rick and Morty or I don't watch The Walking Dead or I don't watch Game of Thrones. They're like, oh my God, you haven't seen this show? Why haven't you seen this show yet? And they freak out. That definitely turns me away from it for a couple reasons. First of all, when someone hypes up a show like that for you, it means your standards, it means your anticipation for that show suddenly now has to be this much higher because you're like, well, if this friend, if this particular person thinks it's this important for me to watch this show, it must be pretty good. Then you watch the show, find out it's not really for you, but could it be that it was only because your anticipation was so high to begin with? There was no way you were going to be satisfied. So I wanted to give credit where credit is due and shout out my guy Dan the Movie Man right now because he has done an absolutely amazing job at respecting people's dislike of certain things. So for instance, he's a big fan of Rick and Morty, but at the same time, he can look at the people who got super hyped about the Szechuan sauce fanatic and say, that's dumb, that's stupid. It was supposed to be a small little joke. It was not supposed to be this crazy comeback of McNugget sauce. And it has nothing to do with the plot of the show itself. It was just one small element of it. And from what I have seen of Rick and Morty, I kind of look at the show and think, you know, the people who watch it and think they're really, really smart because they're watching the show that talks a lot about science or interdimensional travel. And since there's deep things or there's deep moments in that show, it means that if you watch it, you are therefore an incredibly smart person. We all know the meme about the guy who said, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Rick and Morty. I don't agree with that. I think that when you make an entertaining show, you touch lightly on deep subjects, which is not very difficult to do. You elaborate very quickly on subjects that make your mind go, whoa, it's kind of like a Vsauce video. Highlighting things about science that are fascinating, but if you truly did have a high IQ and you were interested in deep science and deep learning, you wouldn't be fascinated in just the interesting stuff. You would be fascinated by the small things. And I think people that are actually highly interested in interdimensional travel or the deepness of science are the people who are interested in things that the mainstream is not interested in. That's what shows devotion because science is a lot more than just skimming the surface of interesting facts. The idea of different parallel universes and being able to turn that sciencey gag into a comedic cartoon show means that you're only taking the interesting facts. You're only taking the parts of that science that make you go, whoa, that's amazing, and highlighting those aspects. Whereas someone who's actually interested, like I said, would be interested in the things that not everyone cares about. I would say it's kind of the difference between a Kip Thorne whose intelligence was used to design films like Interstellar so that we knew about what wormholes would act like or what black holes would act like compared to someone like Neil deGrasse Tyson who likes to meet with celebrities and talk about just random science facts and likes to make cameos in movies like Ice Age and act like a science professor. One of them's kind of a mainstreamist, one of them's kind of a down to the facts gritty, here's what a black hole looks like, where the other one's just kind of like, how can I get people interested in science by highlighting the most interesting parts of it? See, I'm a guy who's interested in space travel and I like talking about technology, but I am by no means an engineer and I definitely did not have great grades in chemistry class. I struggled a lot 
lot in science classes in high school, and by the time I got to college, I made an effort to not really take science classes. Because I did not feel a calling that direction, I did not feel it interesting once you got into the nitty gritty parts of particular science classes. So before I go off any more on that tantrum about Rick and Morty and their fans versus what I think the show truly appeals to, like I said, my friend Dan does not pressure me to watch something and say, oh my god, how have you not seen this? It's the greatest thing ever. He can still pitch me a movie, he can still pitch me a TV show and say that, yeah, I think it's worth watching, you should check that out sometime. And when he says that, I'm definitely way more open to the idea. So what I encourage is that if you know a friend or if you know a family member who doesn't watch something that you really, really love, don't hype it up, even if it's your favorite TV show of all time, don't hype it up like it is the greatest thing of all time because we all have very, very different tastes. And while everyone liked to team up and talk about while Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was a complete joke, everyone's tired of that type of game and they thought Battlefield 1 was better, still a lot of people out there who have played COD Infinite Warfare have agreed that, hey, this game isn't that bad. I like it a lot. Because I think what actually causes people to be turned off from particular products or what causes people to not like a brand because of its fan base is because the fan base treats it like a religion. They treat it like it's a god. They start worshiping Apple and say, you have to buy the iPhone, you have to buy the iPad, you have to buy the Apple Watch because it's the greatest thing ever. While I do think all those products are the best in their category, I still get perfectly along with all of my friends and family who do not agree with that statement. If they ask me why I like it, I will tell them. I will give them some reasoning and I will talk about why I think it's really good, but I also like to hear why they like their particular products. If they have a Galaxy phone or if they have a Moto phone, I like to ask them why they chose that one in particular so that we can understand each other and it doesn't make people particularly hate a brand because of its fan base. They just understand that brand and its fan base a lot better. I think people who know me from YouTube would say that, oh my god, he's a loyal Apple sheep. Can you believe my friends that like Android phones? I can't believe them. What do you think, Drew? I understand them completely, and the people who know me personally in real life and don't know me because of YouTube can admit, yeah, Drew's not going to freak out at you, and Drew's not going to shame you for buying non-Apple devices. He's not going to care about that sort of thing. I'm happy to have a conversation about it because I love understanding different points of view. For one, it helps me understand other people's point of view, and second, it helps me understand my point of view even better. So I think in conclusion, all of us could do a better job at representing the brands we appreciate, whether it be TV shows, movies, or tech products, whatever you want to name it, as long as we're not shaming our friends and family for not liking it or for not trying. That's how we can keep people interested in spreading their horizon and trying new products and different brands, and in that way, everyone can have a better taste of diversity and selection, and of course, if you show them a brand that you really like and they don't like it, don't hate them for it. Just respect it and try to ask why, so you can understand it yourself and understand that difference between you two. Of course, let me know all your thoughts on this subject in the comments below. Thank you guys for your time, and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.